Welcome back to my channel on linguistics and language learning. This video is dedicated to my viewer who asked me to analyze the sentence, what he says is true. As you can see on the screen here, the sentence asked to be analyzed as what he says is true. Now, this sentence contains a noun clause. Therefore, I put a title here, analyzing a noun clause using a tree diagram. Now, the sentence what he says is true, okay? This sentence is also composed of NPN VB, noun phrase and verb phrase. Now, what makes this sentence different from other sentences is the element of the NP, okay? The element of the NP. As you can see here that the NP is composed of a complement phrase, okay? The NP is composed of complement phrase. And the VP is composed of linking verb and adjective. Now, complement phrase is composed of complementizer conjunction and sentence. Complementary conjunctions include all of the question words, okay? All of the question words, what, who, where, why, how, and so on, okay? In addition to these question words, complementary conjunctions also include that, whether, and if, okay? And in this sentence, we use what as the complementary conjunction or CJCL. Now, let's go on. The sentence here is composed of NP and V. As you can see here that the NP is he, so it is a okay, personal pronoun. As we have only verb as the component of VP, so we have only one branch, that is verb. Next, what we are going to do is only to put the given words to each of the labels. Okay, so it's easy. Okay, so we put he as the element of personal pronoun, says as the element of a verb, is as the linking verb and true as the adjective. Okay, that's the analysis of a sentence. What he says is true by using a tree diagram. Now, as you can see here, the noun clause in this sentence is used as a subject. Why I said so? Because if we delay the NP here, okay, if we delay the NP, so we have only VP, and the VP here is the predicate. It means that we don't have any subject. So what's the subject? The subject is in the form of a clause. And when the subject is composed of a clause, that clause must be a noun clause. That's why I put a title, analyzing a noun clause by using three diagrams. And why is it called a complement phrase? It's called a complement phrase because this phrase or this clause is used to complete the sentence. Without this clause, the sentence is not complete. That is the reason why this clause is called a complement phrase. Okay, now let's come to analyze the second sentence. The second sentence is, I read the book that John gave. You see here that we use that as the conjunction. And that in this context is used as a relative pronoun. Whenever we have a relative pronoun in a sentence, it means that we have a relative clause in that sentence. And whenever we have a relative clause, it means that we have performed a kind of 
transforming transformation. And this is what we call as a relative transformation, just like the my previous video, because it talked about the uh, relative class transformation. Okay, now uh, we start the analysis by dividing sentences into NP and VP. And the NP here is represented by a personal pronoun I, and then the verb here is red. And you see here that the NP is composed of determinant noun and RP. This is, you know, relative clause, okay, RP. And the RP here is composed of a sentence. And the sentence is composed of NP and VP. Okay, and the NP here is a noun, John. And the VP is composed of verb and NP. And here, the NP is composed of determiner and noun. The determiner is represented by article there, and noun is a book. You can see here that the sentence or the words here do not completely represent the sentence that we are going to analyze or that we are analyzing. Because here, the sentence is, I read the book that John gave, but here the sentence is, I read the book, John gave the book. This is the deep structure of the sentence. As I told you, before you analyze a sentence that experiences a kind of transformation, we must be able to find its deep structure, okay? The analysis of transformation must begin with its deep structure, okay? And this, I read the book, John gave the book, okay? This is actually the deep structure of the sentence, I read the book that John gave. Now, we transform this, okay? We transform this into the adjective or relative clause indicated by the use of, okay, a relative pronoun. Now, let's see, okay? We still have NP and VP here as the constituents of the sentence and also personal pronoun and the VP is composed of V or verb and NP. And then the NP is composed of determiner, noun, and RP. Okay, next, determiner is composed of article. And then, as usual, RP is composed of a sentence. Now, this is the relative clause transformation begins. Okay, now, the sentence is composed of NP, NP, and VP. As you can see here, in the deep structure, we only have NP and VP as the element of, okay, of the sentence. But here, we have NP, NP, and VP. It means that we add one more NP before the VP. Now, the question is, where does this where does this NP come from? This NP comes from the NP, which is the constituent of the VP in the deep structure. Okay, you know, we transform it. We change its position. Okay, so the NP here, okay, in the deep structure, it is a purpose of determiner or article there and book. And here we don't have this determiner and noun anymore because we have replaced it by using a relative pronoun, okay? Or pro R by using a relative pronoun. Okay. And the rest will be similar. We have here NP as a noun, okay? Uh, we have NP as a noun, just like this one, NP is a noun. And then we have here VP. And of course, you know, we only have verb here. Why? Because the, the NP has been moved. 
So we don't have NP anymore here as the element or constituent of the VP. This is the place where the transformation is taking place in this sentence. Now, um, we have labeled all the elements of the sentence. Um, finally, okay, we just write the given words for each of the labels. Okay, so I as the personal pronoun, read as the verb, the as the article, book as the noun, that as the relative pronoun, okay, this is our focus, and then John as the noun, and gave as the verb, okay? That's how we analyze the sentence, I read the book that John gave by using a tree diagram. Once again, remember, when you analyze a sentence that contains an adjective clause, your analysis must show the transformation. And the transformation is indicated by two kinds of diagram. The first diagram indicates the surface, uh, sorry, the deep structure of the sentence. And the second diagram indicates or represents the uh, surface structure of the sentence. I hope you can understand this and see you in the next video.